Welcome to the Wyoming Division of the Union Pacific Railroad. You're in a time tunnel, and you may pick whatever year you'd like, from the late 1930s to the mid-1960s. These are the often barren and wide open spaces of Wyoming railroading. What you're looking at is a combination of the memories and the fantasies of John Gray. Well, when I grew up in Boise, Idaho, uh, I used to take the train back and forth between Boise and South Bend, Indiana, where I went to school. And Cheyenne, Wyoming was the point on the Union Pacific Railroad where all of the great big locomotives ran. In steam days, uh, it was big boys, and in turbine days, it was, a, it was a large gas turbines. And in diesels, they ran the world's largest diesels there. So I couldn't resist on my way to and fro South Bend, Indiana, uh, my brother and I would jump off the train, spend a few hours there and catch the next train east or west, depending on the direction we're going, and wander around the Cheyenne roundhouse and yards. John has such fond memories of the big blow turbines, the first and second generation diesels, and the double engine giants that pulled those trains back then. So years later, in the 1980s, he began collecting brass models of the Union Pacific Railroad cars. When he decided to put that collection into motion, he decided that he wanted it to be big and he wanted it to be first class. He wanted to run long, heavy brass model trains that had a tendency to be somewhat finicky. The track would have to be flawless so there wouldn't be derailments. It took some experimentation. We found that the homo soot and plywood kept moving all of the time. And in order to run the long passenger trains and the, the big steam engines we run on this layout, everything had to be absolutely stable. So we started over again with a splined roadbed, which is essentially quarter inch plywood, uh, ripped about three inches wide in long strips, glued together and then bolted together and put in vertically uh, where the track would run. And the advantage of the spline roadbed is that you can create long, continuous strips, 30, 40, 50 feet long, by gluing and bolting these splines together and then just bending them around the curves that you want to run and create the super elevations that you would like. So you end up with something that's both very stable and without any abrupt changes in, in uh, curvature or elevation to ensure a smooth uh, roadbed. On top of that, we placed uh, cork. Uh, roadbed. Uh, and the reason we use cork, once again, it's very stable and secondly, it's very quiet. It's a one-man operation, which nearly takes up the 26 by 46 foot room it occupies. It's a room which is climate controlled, once again to minimize layout expansion or contraction. The problem-free track is Walther's Code 83, which is nailed and glued to the roadbed. All the joints are soldered and filed. The centerpiece of the layout is a detailed replica of the Cheyenne shop facilities as they existed in the late 1950s. There's a realistic Wyoming mine scene that's a recent addition to the layout. It may be a one-man operation, but it took more than one man to put it together. Phil Gazzano helped build most of the buildings and much of the scenery. Well, the mine scene is one of my favorite uh, projects that I worked on in this layout that uh, was quite a challenge. I worked from photographs and prototype mine and used a little artistic license as far as the, uh, the buildings, but they're, they follow the uh, prototype fairly closely. It's primarily built of basswood. I can show you underneath and see what that looks like. Quite a bit of work. It consumed about uh, three months total construction time, eight hour days to finish. The coal seam is built of uh, actual coal lumps of coal and sprayed with an airbrush. And the, the other buildings, of course, are also basswood. The uh, material, uh, the fill material is actual prototype fill material from the Cheyenne area. So it is authentic. The gravel, the rock work is all, all real. And that started because uh, so many times I tried to explain to people that the, that the rock around Cheyenne, Wyoming, toward Laramie, over the Continental Divide, uh, was pink and I never got the pink that I wanted so one day I rented a town car from Hertz and drove up to the top of Sherman Hill and it turned out to be a thunderstorm uh, lightning everywhere 
and found a gravel pit there by the side of the road and shoveled the trunk of that Lincoln Continental full of about 350 pounds of crushed rock and had it shipped back UPS and that's the rock that's on this layout. Uh, the sand and the rock is all from Sherman Hill uh, near Granite, Wyoming and it's absolutely pink and that's the color we used. Even the backdrop scenery is a work of art painted by an artist using reference photos taken by Gray when he traveled to wide open and windswept Wyoming. In fact, John Gray is a railroad man who started his career in the marketing department of the Western Pacific. He left as senior vice president of Intermodal and now owns his own Intermodal terminal contracting firm. That firm operates facilities for all the major railroads. It's that knowledge that helps give this layout an impressive level of accuracy. He's a man who knows railroads, both real and imagined. 